This is the final assignment on depth cues, so it's the ultimate assignment that combines all of them. We've already covered line, detail, value, contrast. Now we're going to talk about color as well. Here I decided to use a regular graphite pencil because I wanted to get a lot more detail in that initial stage of my drawing. And um, the only problem with using regular graphite is when you go in to use lighter colors, you're going to have to erase the graphite. So in this still life, I've placed the darker objects in the background uh, intentionally to show you what happens when you don't have a choice and you have to draw things that are dark in the background. So it's going to be trickier because when something is dark in the background, it's going to feel like it's uh, popping out of the drawing and, and closer to you. So then how do you create that depth cue where you make the value darker in the foreground and lighter in the background. Now I'm using more of an amber brown. So this is where I notice that the bottle is a little bit lighter. And uh, one of our depth cues is color temperature. So the warmth of the color, this amber is warmer, so I really shouldn't be using it that much in the background. I should be using it in the foreground more, which I will. Um, I still want to stay true to what I'm seeing, so there's kind of a balance to strike here. You know, you you can change things a notch. If you change them too much, then you're really transforming the drawing and it's not going to have that realism that you're going for anymore. Parts of the paper plate were light, very light, even lighter than the table itself. And the table was kind of a cool gray. And I have a large set of color pencils that does have a cool gray in it, so I decided to just go for that. If you have a smaller set of colored pencils, uh, you'll just have to blend more of the colors to get what you're looking for. So always refer back to the color wheel you created to see which colors will work, what looks closest to what you're looking for. If you want to avoid having to color in the background this much, you might just put down a few sheets of white paper uh, under your objects before you even start. Here I'm darkening the foreground, so I'm already using my depth cue, uh, and that is value. I'm going to speed this up so the video doesn't end up being too long, but I'm going to keep this and just have it go in fast speed so you can see how I built up that shadow next to the can. So I'm doing it in layers. And the best thing to do with colored pencils is layer small amounts at a time because you can always add more. It's much harder to try and erase and go back. Erasing changes the texture of how the pencil looks on the paper and it's not quite as uh, precise as it is with graphite pencils. Colored pencils have wax and oils in them, so they're a lot more difficult to erase. So it looks like I did that in 10 seconds, but it's just a video that was sped up. Don't rush through this sort of thing. It's going to take you longer than it might seem. Here I'm adding all of the cast shadows. And I'm using the same method that I used with the shadow next to the can. And now I'm uh, using red on the can. Now red is a warm color overall. So again, that shouldn't be in the background. Red should be more in the foreground. But since that can was red, I don't want to change the color of the can. But a few things I could do is the color temperature of this particular red is a little bit cooler than the red I actually saw. So that red should have been slightly closer to a tomato red, you know, a, a warmer red. But I intentionally chose a cooler red to create that depth cue. These are small incremental things you can do to your drawing, but they will help. Now I'm adding a uh, reflection from the can onto the table. And uh, here I'm using some of my grays to draw the back of a can. And again, I left these things in and just sped them up just so you can see how that gets built up over time. Here I'm working on the label on the bottle. And I'm using that blue as a complementary color. 
And once I was done, the label looked a little too green to me. So then I added magenta just to cancel that out and get more of that kind of muddy grayish color. So the colors in the background should have less intensity, meaning they shouldn't be quite as pure. The colors should look more muddy and more kind of low intensity. So here I'm working on the plate and the plate was a lot warmer. So I'm using my warmer gray from the set and uh, the color looks quite different from the gray I used on the table. On the back of the plate, I noticed a reflection from the can, so I added some red there. And that's kind of a light, warm gray. It almost looks beige. Once you get to a color study, things get so much more complex. Dealing with depth cues becomes more challenging because then you have to consider intensity, value, detail, um, t color temperature, all these things at once. And some of them work against each other. So for example, using a complementary color will darken a color but it will also reduce its intensity. So darkening it will make it look like it's in the foreground, but reducing its intensity will make it look like it's in the background. These are situations in, you, in which you just have to make a decision based on your drawing, based on the objects in the still life, and just take a look and see like what, what would be more important in this particular case. What, is it the value? Is it the color intensity? Um, so there's a lot to consider here. I mean, beyond mixing complementary colors to get the uh, shadows, there's so much more to work on. And with these depth cues, you get even more of a complex network of things that work together or against each other to create more depth in your drawing. Here I'm using that kind of cream color for the highlights in the plate, since the plate had a slightly yellowish color to it. Notice here as I add the highlight, I skip an area where I really just wanted to stay the white of the paper. There was a stronger reflection in that part of the plate. Here I'm adding detail to the plate, and I'm adding some detail to the back of the plate just to stay true to the still life but I'm gonna get more precise with the front of the plate to create more of that depth using detail as a depth cue. Notice also in the handle of the fork, it gets darker, more contrasty uh, in the foreground of the drawing. And the closest thing to me is that cork. So I'm gonna add the most detail there and I'm gonna keep that cork warmer than I actually see it. So again, these things are pretty subtle. I'm not changing the thing completely, but I'm just tweaking it a little bit to make it look slightly warmer, slightly more contrasty, and uh, have as much detail in it as possible. Here I noticed there was a reflection on the table. So I've erased some of the gray, blended it in, and then there was a warm reflection from the actual color of the cork in the shadow. I'm adding yellow in some of the highlights. And uh, here I'm exaggerating the detail and the handle of the fork even more. But you can see it creates that kind of depth. So that red reflection from the can looked a little bit too intense and I decided to go ahead and add some green, the complementary color, to kind of deaden it, make it more of a gray, which uh, did also darken it, but I didn't press too hard, so I'm trying to keep it relatively light compared to how it really looked, while also making that red color not quite as intense. So finally, I'm working on the green objects here, and uh, Honestly, I don't recommend working on your drawing like this where you do one thing at a time. It's better to work on everything a little bit at a time at once. So don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> Here I'm using the green. I didn't start on these pieces of candy right away because I didn't have anything else that's green in the drawing. So I decided to leave it for last when I actually pull out the green pencils. 
but I'm using those same principles and the candy's relatively close to me so I'm gonna leave the color relatively intense although I'm not getting quite as detailed as I did with the cork so I added a lot more detail in the cork and a lot more contrast and the color in the cork is warmer so it has more yellow and it's more intense the shadow in the candy had some red especially on the right side probably reflecting from the can and red is the complementary color to green so that works out well too and one of the things i noticed because this is green cellophane the light was passing through the cellophane and hitting the table so i had some green on the table as well finally the last thing i did is added even more contrast in the cork using a complementary color so again I wanted to leave the light side of the cork as intense and warm as possible. So I didn't want to compromise um, that depth cue, but I also wanted to add a little bit of the complementary color to create contrast. So you have to kind of find a balance among these things and just make some decisions as you go based on what you see in front of you.